these are seven of the major details that you might have missed from the Ant-Man Quantumania trailer. And trust me, the last one is absolutely crazy. Number one, the tone is completely different. Throughout the trailer, we get a ton of indications that Scott Lang has basically cashed in on the fame that came from being one of the Avengers that helped save the universe in Endgame. But now, his world is about to change all over again. Both him and his daughter Cassie are having to work actively to solve all of the trauma that they experienced from being blipped for five years. In that meantime, it looks like Cassie has actually grown up, working on her own inventions, working directly with Hank Pym and Janet, and obviously going to be thrusted into an entire world of chaos once they hit the quantum realm. From that setup, we also saw from the trailer that Kang is most likely going to use Cassie as bait and hold her hostage in order to force Ant-Man to do his bidding. If you couldn't tell by this point, this is a huge difference tonally to what we got in the first two movies. Essentially, Scott Lang has gone from an outcasted criminal to a famous superhero with his own podcast and book series. And now you're telling me that he has to go into Mortal Kombat with Kang the Conqueror himself without any help from the other Avengers? It's interesting to see how they're going to handle all of these tonal shifts as they set up Kang Dynasty. Numero dos. We also got an inside scoop into Kang's motivations. Based on the conversations that we got in this trailer and the one from Comic-Con, Kang is searching for something that was stolen from him. And since he's residing in the Quantum Realm by this point, he needs help from Ant-Man and his abilities in order to retrieve it. Or so he says, could this be just an elaborate trap to not put himself into trouble and just have Ant-Man take the fall? We don't know. What we do know is that a lot of the internet is speculating that whatever we see in this ring contraption with a lot of energy coming out of it has a deep personal connection to Kang. Basically, there's two schools of thought. One of them being that inside that contraption lies Ravonna Renslayer, which we know from the comics is Kang's love interest, and we also got her introduced in the first season of Loki. However, the second option seems a lot more plausible in that it is a power source for Kang's famous ship that can travel across the multiverse. Up until this point, we haven't seen Kang the Conqueror himself appear outside of the Quantum Realm, so he's stuck inside there for some ungodly reason. Which of these two options seems the most likely? Let me know in the comments down below. While you're down there, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you're having fun with the notification bells on, and share this with your friends if they're still discussing what the hell happened in this trailer. Number three, we have to talk about his conquer of the multiverse. From the trailer, we know that Kang has already amassed a massive army that is residing in the quantum realm. And if you look closely around multiple shots in that trailer, you see circular portals that are barren across the sky that appear to lead into other different timelines. I don't know about you, but they look eerily familiar to the same type of portals that we saw in Avengers Endgame as our crew of Avengers was using the Quantum Realm as a method to explore different timelines. In theory, this means that whatever Kang's plot might be in this film, it could end by him gaining the ability to use those portals to mobilize his entire Quantum Army across the multiverse. From the teasers and the trailer, we have learned by this point that Michelle Pfeiffer's character has some connection to Kang. She directly states that Kang is not to be trusted and is looking actively for some way to stop him. That makes a ton of sense because as we mentioned previously, he has a ship that is able to travel across the multiverse and we actually saw it in the trailer as well. In said time that he has been reportedly, you know, stuck in the quantum realm, he has had enough time to prepare and mass his army and of course build the colossal city of Chronopolis. It's a time traveling stronghold that we know from the comics and of course it looks really badass. How did he get stuck? Why is his ship not working? How does Janet know that he's untrustworthy? Too many questions, but Janet most likely has the answers. We also got the introduction of MODOK. Through the Funko figures and a bunch of other leaks, we already knew that MODOK was going to be involved in the film in some capacity. Thankfully, however, it looks like he's going to be a secondary villain and most of the major attention uh, in terms of the antagonist role is going to be centered around Kang. The Conqueror is our main villain of the story. However, we might be getting an appropriate introduction into MODOK's origin story. Early reports of this movie did state that MODOK was apparently going to get a rework and that the one that we see in this trailer could be an amalgamation or a different version of Darren Cross. If you don't remember his name, he's the yellow jacket that we saw in the first Ant-Man movie, which we saw getting sucked and distorted into the quantum realm at the end of the film. Could he be given a different origin story in this film? We will have to wait and see. I'm pretty sure everybody 
everybody on the internet noticed it by now, but the ring imagery was very prominent throughout Marvel's Phase 4. And the trend is going to continue in this film as well. Miss Marvel had the bracelet, which looks eerily familiar to the Kree Negabands that we know from the comics, which basically bestow the cosmic powers to Marvel and whoever is the wearer at the time. In fact, we also learned through the Miss Marvel show that these bands allow you to open doors into other realities and also have the possibility of time travel. The Eternals had rings. Shang-Chi had 10 rings, which are a beacon of chaos in and of themselves. When it comes to those 10 rings that the Mandarin was using, we learned from the post credit scene that they actually serve as a cosmic beacon across the multiverse. Now, in this film, we got our first look at a huge ring-like structure that has a lot of cosmic Christmas lights coming out. And of course, we have Ant-Man trying to force his way into the actual structure at the Order of Kang in order to retrieve what he's been stolen from. The main question is, however, can all of these artifacts with different properties be banded together and used for some ulterior motive? We will have to wait and see. You've waited long enough. This is the most important detail. We have the expansion of the multiverse. In this trailer, we had a very peculiar scene in which Scott spontaneously split into two different versions of himself. And every major set piece that we saw in the trailer has him interacting with hundreds and even thousands of different Ant-Man variants. It seems that all of them are going to have to band together in order to complete their goal of reaching the Quantum Nexus. This is the area at the center of the Quantum Realm that basically blends and distorts every single law of reality, gravity, and space-time. That is a good enough explanation for all of this craziness, but it also sets up a huge trend for the rest of Phase 5, which is all of our heroes gathering help from other versions of themselves in order to defeat Kang the Conqueror by the time that Kang Dynasty rolls around and even further setting up the consequences of Avengers Secret Wars. With that set up, the journey is simple. We are trying to stop Kang from having supremacy over all of the different MCU timelines. There you have it. Those are the seven major details that you might have missed from the Ant-Man Quantumania trailer. Let me know which one caught you by surprise the most in the comments down below. And of course, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.